Well, welcome back, viewers, for another edition of uh, Heads Up. And welcome back, Goat. Good to see you back. You're looking very happy and chirpy. What are you yeah, happy and feeling, chirpy about? We're feeling pretty good about life, I have to say, uh, Neil. Yeah, right. uh, Look at those poor Melbourne buggers, eh? Yeah, sun's shining pretty much. Yeah. The days are getting longer, a bit of heat in the sun, some good horses starting to step out. And yeah, well, why not be happy with life? Yeah. You won't be happy with life if your name's Pedro or if you're a chief supporter, though. Yeah, I was going to say, he's lost a bit of weight this week. He was looking forward to getting that multi from the Chiefs. But robbed, absolutely robbed of that plus six and a half points. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? Was it just... Uh, uh, I thought, oh, well, it's good that he's given them a chance to check it upstairs and I'll have one look at it and it'll be uh, mm. ruled knock on, no try, scrum Chiefs. But, gee, I don't know what the TMO or the ref was seeing because... I'd say 98% of the New Zealand rugby population would have said that was a knock-on. And the other 2% were in the Blind Institute. That's right. You were in Specsavers. So you're just ridiculous. No, oh, sorry, Pedro, but uh, yeah, getting butter up for a week won't do you too much harm. You need to lose a, lose a bit of weight, so that's fine. <laughs> Especially after you got the first leg home with Crystallise. I really let the team down, didn't I? That was a nice, brave win. Um, Gee, you wouldn't have wanted a few more strides, but uh, hey, they pay the same whether they win by a nose or 10 lengths. So, yeah, you know, uh, he's in good form, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, and my gift was the only quality bet last, last Saturday. And he's, I thought he was home those last few strides, but Robusto came at him late and uh, just got him on the line. In front of the, just past the line, he was back in front, but that's racing. We move on and try and find one or two more. Rightio, now we've um, got some good racing at Big Fence, haven't we? Howard tomorrow and De Rapp up for 12 races for both meetings and good size yeah. field. It's going to be hard to find a winner amongst those, but we've got a race, race seven, I thought we'd look at, at T Rapa. Race seven at T Rapa. Let's good have size a size field. What do we Bring got it here? Up here? We have got a 1200 metre, uh, basically open handicap, rating 98. Yeah, you got a few uh, good sorts uh, resuming up the top of the book there. Uh, a couple of promising ones coming through the grades, perhaps Mr. Universe. And some classy horses down the bottom, like Carolina, tell you what, romantic lady. So you've probably done a lot of trial form in this race on picking Neil. So what are you going to tip us? Sure have. Yeah, no, Carolina, I thought the $18 was a big over. So she's, um, she really impressed me last campaign, running off some good sex laws, but always just looked at a little bit weak, and I thought, oh, she'd be one to watch when she comes back this season. And based on her trial, she came in really nicely uh, for second, I think it was, and um, gee, she was looking powerful. And I thought from that inside barrier, if the inside's still all right, um, which it may or may not be, but um, $18 and $5.25, I thought she represented pretty good value. Got some... A bit of pace in the race, so she'll settle, you know, midfield in there probably. Um, they'll all come wide probably by this time of day, so I think she's a pretty play, pretty yep. play bet. Um, no, 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 you, you don't need to put much on at that price to no, get right. yourself a feed of fish and chips on a Saturday night, do you? That's right, dear. Yeah. Maybe chucking a few uh, power fritters as well. Okay, uh, there you go. Those. Right. Uh, um, um, Hara's, yeah, there's some good horses as well. Up and coming horses running at Hara, which uh, should be a good meeting. So, looking forward to getting along there for 12 races. Better set the alarm clocks as uh, we're off and running at about, was it 20 past 10 or something like that? Yeah, that early, correct. Something, or it might be 20 to 11, but pretty early. So, no, that should be good. Uh, Australia, the action starts to hot up in Australia. And of course, oh, yeah. the horse that will be crowned uh, New Zealand's horse of the year, Melody Bell, resumes tomorrow in Sydney. Thoughts on her? Um, I thought I'd just go and look at her trial at uh, Sydney, and it was lengths better than her trial at um, Tirapa last campaign when she was scrubbed along and just didn't fire up. And she ran fourth on the, I think fourth or fifth on the Foxwood Plate, then came out and won the, was it the ta uh, Tazina? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second up. And I think she just links better than where she was last campaign. And she's drawn wide, 
which may be a plus by this time of day. And there's a fair bit of rain forecast. So on the heavy track, which is really going to play into her hands, she's got to be a decent chance to you know, get us Kiwis off to a good start for the season. What do you reckon? I'm not going to disagree with anything you've said there. Uh, maybe maybe time. spelling in that slightly warmer climbs has uh, helped it, do you think? Yes, yeah, so, like, so she was spelled over there. And I'm not sure. Yeah, no, she hasn't been home. She's Is been there. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, so. Yeah. And that trial, did, she did show a lot of uh, vigour there, much, much, much more than last campaign in that trial, so. And what she's into 350 now with um, high tail coming out. So, no, I'm looking forward to that race. Uh, Make a boy, what time is that on? That's um, 12.35. Okay, now, um, sports selection, the Chiefs didn't really let us down as a referee, they let us wow. down the team. No, nah, they didn't play. They just weren't good enough. The Crusaders are a machine. They are. And they are. So we're jumping back on their bandwagon. Uh, to to win the championship, uh, win it at home against the Highlanders, and I just fear for the Highlanders. Their scrum got uh, absolutely dominated by the Blues last week, and you'd say the Crusaders scrum is far uh, superior than the Blues scrum. So I can see scrum penalties, Moanga kicking to the corner, line out drives, tries, pretty easy win. I'm picking for the Crusaders to get us back on. The right track, Neil. I'm just going to go Crusaders thirteen plus dollar fifty seven to um, just get that winning feeling back in our veins because we haven't had it for a few weeks, so we're feeling the pressure. But hopefully, the Crusaders to do the business. That's Sunday afternoon game at uh, three thirty five. I like your logic, and uh, they were a class team, so they'll come through for us. Um, Right, last week's question. Uh, quite a few, well, 12 people got the correct answer. That Hugh Bowman's first about... name? James, I believe it is. Yeah. 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 Did that. anyone put, did many people put Hubert? No. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from me, yeah. no, it was definitely James. So one to 12, give me a number. Yeah, uh, number nine. Number nine. Bruce R. All the way from down south. One type subscriber, so he'll be happy. So I'll put your multi up. I won't name it now because there's a lot of, lot of things to change between now and Saturday. I'll put it up before noon on Saturday. Uh, but more than likely, it'll be into the Crusaders 13 Plus, but I'll find something there. Uh, shall we? Here's a question, yep. reasonably topical at the moment, perhaps, Neil, for this week's. Uh... Oh, good, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this week's question next to win the multi. Uh, the Melbourne Cup. Great horse race that we all know. Started in 1860. Since then, has there ever been a year where the Melbourne Cup hasn't been run? Yes or no? A simple one one or two. Yes, a get yep. a Y or an M. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So, so has them... We'll, we'll clarify it. So... Yes, the Melbourne Cup has been run every single year since 1860. No, they have missed a year or three or two or four or five. Okay. So, yes, it's been run every year. No, it hasn't. Simple. You don't need to say how many years it's missed if you think it's no. We just want a yes or a no. Yep. And uh, all correct entries in the draw to win next week's uh, multi. Yep. Okay, so 0273526402 or formpro at formpro.co.nz. Make it by Tuesday night. Um, just make that note down there. Okay, and um, <clears throat> what are we going on to next? We're going on to brickbats and bouquets. Yeah, I popped in and bought the race form yesterday, actually, Neil. I, I think oh. you haven't got your copy yet this week, but... I was impressed. It's back to that bigger sized uh, book. So while that will, won't please some that like to have it in, fit in their back pocket, I think it provides a lot of space and the form uh, guides are well laid out and a lot bigger than what perhaps we were used to in the past, which gives you a room to write stuff down and odds and comments and all that sort of stuff. So uh, 
Yeah, I'll give the new race form publication a bouquet in its first week back. Great. But the Friday Flash, that size. No, it's it good having that size. Because I think in the smaller book, you've got two or three pages of for one race and you know, much smaller print. So, no, I'm looking for them to shoot down shortly and buy one from the local TAB. And I'll give my comments next week. So that's good. Um, right now, we've had a... I started up a syndicate in May, the Form Pro Quaddy Syndicate, and we've been going up and down and slowly down for the last few weeks. We've had the last legs going off and with the field going and the damn favourites got up. So we've got $900 left, and I thought, well, let's, let's change tactics a wee bit and try and get the whole lot back so we can get a payout for our subscribers, which was about just over $10,000 starting for. So I've been... Tossing some odd ideas around with the goat, and the goat's come up with a, um, a suggestion here. And I think that's a good idea where we can pick a, a, a bet, whether it's a horse or a sports bet each week, and multi them in, multi that $900 into it, and try and build it back to that $10,000 plus. Just got to think of a good name for it. So, any ideas, goat? I reckon, Neil, you need to get out of jail. Yeah, you've got yourself in a bit. Of, <laughs> you've got yourself in a bit of trouble. You need to get out of jail. Yep. I've done some maths. If we work this oh, over five weeks, and we have a couple of short priced horses or sports events, um, and say we multi them up, and we average a dollar fifty each week in five weeks, and just keep rolling it up, rolling it up, rolling it up, in five weeks, your nine hundred will be back up to over that ten grand. So that's. The five-week challenge of Neil to get out of jail. Hopefully, I can help him and not trip him up and send him there for life. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge for us. So, we'll start that tomorrow, shall we? And you'll post that on your website sort of around that noonish time when the, all the scratchings are through from Aussie and we know a bit more of the weather conditions and the track conditions and, yeah. and yeah, the like. Yeah, it's a fair bit to invest. So, I've got to make sure everything's in our favour. I want to go on there and say, oh, is it whatever... Um, that will, I'll, yeah, as I say, I'll post that. Which I say, I'll post that by noon tomorrow, and um, fingers crossed, and we'll see how we go. Looking forward to it. Yep, that right no, should be good. Now, um, on from my favourite part of the, the session is the stump the goat part. And thanks to Warwick for sending in a question. Uh, last week you were pretty good. There's some tricky questions there. Yeah, yeah, not too bad, but. I'm not feeling confident this week. What have we got this week? Uh, it's all about the Great Northern Steeples, a race that I used to love going to watch at Ellerslie. You used to get up on that top of the public stand there and used to watch Ken Brown out in front and uh, won it a few times. And it's just a fantastic race. So <clears throat> there's five questions here. So the first one is... Um, um, okay, Hypnotise, as you know, everyone knows, won the... Great Northern Steeples three times. Okay, what horse or horses has won it twice since 1995? What horse has won it twice since 1995? Royal Ways. Very good. Yeah, didn't think you that one. And Gold, Golden Flare. Did that win it twice? Or that only won it once? That was, that was before. Wise Men, oh, wise yeah. men Say. Yeah, Wise Men Say is the other one. Yeah. Golden Flare only went at once. Maybe it did. Okay. I, no, it was definitely wasn't in saying all ways. So I'll just bring it up here. Don't know. Give you have a look. Um, hang on. So that's it's Warwick's one. Well done, Warwick. Um, second one. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Who has won the most um, Great Northern Steeples since the year 2000? Is it either, uh, this is the rider, um, Sean Fennan or Isaac Lupton? Definitely Isaac Lupton. Why do you say that? Three on hypnotise, two on wise men say, and maybe one on something else from memory. Uh, he's won five and Sean's oh, won four. Yeah. Okay. Well done. So two from two. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Since her partner Ken passed away, Ken Brown, how many winners has Anne Brown, Anne Brown trained in her own name? Yeah, more than you probably think. Uh, Tom Smith, I'm a heroine. Yep. Um, 
and there's probably a couple more in the um, Fair King, Fair King one yep, between yes. uh, the hypnotized wins and yeah, that was a good win. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, so just three, is there? Just the three, just the three. Okay. Oh, well done. Yeah, three out of three. Uh, she's, she's done well, hasn't she? Got a great setup here. Um, yeah, I think she's cutting back a bit. I don't think we've seen any runners. I don't know if she's. Don't quote me on it, but is she still training? Have we well, seen any runners since this jump season? Yeah. That's a good question, actually. Well. Yeah, I think I'll she might have sort of. Because, um, I think I know. I know a lot of the jumping people in around Cambridge are still using her property, but whether she's got them uh, still training them or not, oh, yeah. yeah, not sure. Okay, so I've gone for four out of four. Uh, what year did the which I was annoyed at actually did the running of the race Great Northern Steeples change to September rather than Queen's Birthday weekend? Used to be okay. Little, yeah, right. so that was probably around the year they changed the derby as well. Actually, yeah. So I would say so they changed the derby in '06. So it would be September 2006. Well, according to Wikipedia, the race has been run early, run in early September since 2005. Ah, so one year out. One year out. I remember, I think I think that was the first year a horse called Star Bow won the hurdles, kind of came through the middle, just absolutely flashed home. Oh, yeah, I remember that race, uh, yeah. Laura Tunnel. Was it 2005? Okay. I, th well, I knew they changed the derby from December. Oh, yeah, that'd be right. December 04 to March 06. So yeah. they'd changed, yeah, they changed the hurdles from June. Missing June 05 five to September 05. Sorry, yep, no, I was out there, so only three out of four. Right, last one. Hypnotise won it three times. What was the name of the other horse that won it three times? The mighty Hunterville. Hunterville yeah, good horse. Great Go, horse, Hunterville, it? you got there, you beauty. Yeah. Keith Hobbs <laughs> call on the on his third chase. Beat yeah, a little right. horse called Orca. That's right, yeah. It was a little horse too, right? Black horse, little black horse, wasn't it? Orca? Yeah. 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 No, Hunterville, he was one of my favourites, I have to say, growing up. Okay, and for a bonus point to make up for that one you missed, mm. um, when Smart Hunter and Sir Avian did hair dip in 2001, yeah. what was the eye-catching thing that people saw as they came back to the birdcage? Uh, I assume the jockeys holding hands, kind of saluting together, uh, Michelle and... Yeah. Wayne, is that what yeah. you're on about? That's what's the one, yeah. I was there that day. That was pretty amazing. I mean, they went basically, you know, they, they were both out the front of the field for probably yeah. four or 5,000 metres and they <clears> just <throat> went along together the whole way. And who would have thought at the end of 6,400 metres, they were still... Um, amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, I thought you were going to ask me who run third. And I can, it was a John Wheeler horse, but I can't think of its name. Yeah. Uh, it'll come, I'll check that out. I'll come yeah. back to that third in the 2001 yeah. Great Northern. Uh, oh, well done. Good knowledge. And that's always been a great race. And what did you think of them changing over to September from June? Uh, well, you can understand why they did it in terms yeah, of yeah. giving the horses greater fitness and, and a lead in. And well, this year it's going to be running. Um, this is crazy. October the 17th. You will have the Great Northern Steeplechase at Ellerslie. You will have the Livermore Classic at Hastings. And you will have the Everest at Randwick all on the same day. Amazing. That's pr pretty funny. Well, not funny, just, yeah. But no, I, I think I think that was a good move. Um, you know, it seems a bit strange that the mm. horses are expected to run the ultimate distance sort of two or three, two months into the jumping season. And then um, they yeah, don't run that distance yeah. again. Yeah through the rest of the season where the pattern, they lead up, they build fitness, um, perfect lead in the pack a hunt going into yeah. the Northern. So, uh, Personally, just annoying me because I always look forward to that Saturday, Sunday meeting where you, you know, you'd go along. Saturday, Monday, yeah. Saturday, Monday, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's Traditions have to change sometimes, Neil. Traditions right. have to change. Sure do. Yep. <laughs> uh, look at the rugby. Yeah, the rugby sort of um, got me interested now. Getting some good close games and 
Yeah, the, refere work, from the refereeing's not getting me interested. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, something I miss too is having a sports radio station where you can, you know, people ring up and comment about that sort of crap and, and other things too. Do you miss it? Well, I'll, I'll it'll be interesting to get a, a snap poll from our viewers. So when you're out in the car, you can't listen to radio sport, you can't listen to radio trackside now. What do you listen to? Do you listen to News Talk ZB now? What I do actually, I've got my phone, I've got my uh, Rover app, and I put it on Trackside TV through the Rover app comments for the Rover app commentary and Bluetooth, Bluetooth it to a speaker. And it's just like having the radio going, not as good, because you haven't got the inter, inter race yeah. stuff, interviews with trainers, etc. Um, okay. I, I've i found myself, Neil, I've been listening to News Talk ZB and suddenly I've become an expert on all things politics. <laughs> yes. All those people that ring in, they know everything. So if you can't, if you can't learn something by listening to uh, talkback radio, there's something wrong. Uh, it's too negative for me, talkback radio. That's, I was being a little facetious. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, no, I've tuned in occasionally, and that's educational. So anyway, I'd much rather have uh, radio tracks so radio back on and a good sports talkback. Don't radio. don't be totally surprised. I haven't got any. Uh, solid mail, but I would not be surprised if Radio Trackside did make a reappearance in the next 12 months. He's open. Well, if racing gets back on its feet and this new legislation brings an extra income, they may look at bringing back things like that in some sort of different form or whatever. So, uh, I missed the Saturday radio program. I pre appeared early and I was part of that too, but a lot of people said to me they really missed that, that it was jockeys, trainers, and it was just good information. It what sure was, about. yeah. Um, yep, no, you're not the only one to miss that. And kind of, you don't need to get out of bed now. Uh, that's right. Nothing yeah. to get out of bed for at eight o'clock, is there? <laughs> uh, take the dog for a good walk, and that's about all. But, uh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, okay, well, everyone, have a good weekend. Uh, make plenty of money, and we'll let you know what that get out of jail bet is by noon on Saturday. Have a good weekend too, go. Go you too, Neil. Go the Crusaders.